So you've just finished your video project and you've mixed all your audio and you like how it sounds but it's missing something. Take it to the next level by mastering the audio. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Friday Show. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about audio for video as well as video production in general and composing and all things creative. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are growing in 2018, making the fan bigger. And there's an airplane passing overhead. And you can hear that. Well, we're, today we're talking about mastering in Adobe Audition. And why would you want to master? Let's just start by saying what is mastering when it comes to audio? You can think of it in terms of music because that's where it's talked about most often and many videographers don't even mess with the mastering process. But I'm going to show you today of why you should at least consider it. So back to mastering. It is the process of mixing, processing, and otherwise editing the, your audio at the sub-mix level. Meaning, after all your audio is in place, mastering affects the master track or the master fader. So when you put an effect on that track, it affects all the audio in the entire mix. So mixing refers to track by track, processing and editing and changing levels and gain staging in the actual mix, track by track. Mastering is what you do to all that audio together. So there's a special thing that happens when you put a compressor on the master bus, because once you do that, it changes, it manipulates all the amplitudes of all the audio instead of just doing it track by track. The reason I would say check out video mastering is because Compression and EQ and in fact limiting can really take your project to the next level from an audio perspective. One thing I will add about this, if you've ever done video production for a live event where the video will be played in an auditorium, mastering becomes crucial because to have a really compressed signal that's not gonna jump around is gonna help with a video that's playing out into a room full of lots of people and lots of reverb and stuff like that. <laughs> So that's the general reason why we would master in the first place. So if you're in the Adobe suite, we're gonna talk about how to round trip between Premiere and Audition and get that audio mastered into a final left-right stereo track. So we're over here in Premiere and we have our project pulled up. A sequence is finished. And if you look at the video layers, all the video is done. There's even been an adjustment layer applied with a LUT on it. We've got lower third titles. We've got everything in here, including an outro. Everything is done for this short promotional film. Down here, all our audio lives. We have our dialogue, our natural sounds, our music tracks and extra music tracks, and then our Foley down here. So these have all been mixed, and this mastering tutorial assumes that this has all been mixed in Premiere. So to be able to get the entire sequence over to Adobe Audition, you're gonna navigate over to the project page, which we'll bring and throw in right here. And for me, I organize everything by audio, footage, music. I use Ben strategically, open up sequences here find our current project, which in this case is called Community Renewal V3. There it is, confirmed down here. Right click, edit in Adobe Audition, and then select sequence. So this is gonna pull up a little options menu here and you're gonna be able to name your multi-track project in Adobe Audition. Make sure that the path is set correctly, that if you look here at the file structures, it's in the same place that your project is in and you just wanna stay organized there. Down here, you want to select the entire sequence, video, I'm going to say none, we don't want any video sending to this, we just want the audio, transfer settings, transfer settings, pan and volume information, and open in, in Adobe Audition. So basically, the effects we've put on the clips, the effects we've put on the track mixer are all going to transfer, including pan and volume information, because this is mixed in Premiere, it will all transfer to Audition. Hit OK. So we are now in Audition in a multi-track session. So this sequence right here is the exact same sequence as Premiere, but only the audio tracks are in Audition. So we've got our one, we've got our dialogue track, natural audio, music, music two, audio five, and Foley two. I think this was supposed to say Foley one, but I got lazy. So we're gonna pull it up here. Just play through, make sure our mix is good. All of us are at least relationally impoverished. And so all of us have need for the message of community renewal. And that is that we must learn to love our neighbor as ourself. So if you don't know Audition that well, how it works, it's a little different than a DAW. It doesn't have a mix window, but it does have an effects rack. So basically, this is gonna be your mix window without faders. Uh, and if you know what a fader is, that's the, the volume up and down knob or slider that you would use in a traditional DAW. So all of these tracks, if you click on them, you're gonna see their effects rack over here. Now there's nothing applied except for what was applied in Premiere. So I've obviously already compressed 
Uh, I put a compressor on this track, which is all natural audio from the camera. But other than that, I've done nothing but just take in the mixes that I've already done. Dialogue has already been processed and baked in there and brought it into Audition. So we'll navigate down to the master track, select it. Now, here is where we want to put our mastering tools because these are going to apply to all the dialogue underneath it, and then we can bounce the whole thing out as one stereo left-right track to bring back into Premiere. The first thing from a mastering perspective is to compress. So we're going to pull up a compressor here, single band compressor. We're going to listen to the audio and set our threshold accordingly. We're going to start with a 4 to 1 ratio. All of us are at least relationally impoverished. And so all of us have need for the message of community renewal, and that is that we must learn to love our neighbor as ourself. And it doesn't matter if you live in a struggling neighborhood or a gated community, we all have relational situations. Not we care if you look like us. If you worship like us, love really does work. And when we choose... So like that said in a negative six there, you can hear that affecting it just enough. We're going to add another compressor to this. And this single band compressor, we're going to also do a 4 to 1 ratio, but our threshold's going to be more like negative 3. We're not going to really smash this. To love the people around us, we can rebuild trust and begin to change the core. East relationally impoverished. And so all of us have need for the message of community renewal, and that is that we must learn to love our neighbor as ourself. And it doesn't matter if you live in a struggling neighborhood or a gated community. We all have relational situations that we need to improve if we want our lives and ultimately if we want the world. So it's very subtle, but what that compressor is doing from a mastering perspective is, is pulling back all the peaks from each individual track all as a collective one. So every track together, it's pulling back the output from everything. And what that tends to do from an audio perspective is tie everything together. Compressors on the mastering channel tend to be the glue for your mix. This is true in music and this is also true in video. So we're going to move on now to EQ after we put a couple compressors on. We're going to pull up our parametric equalizer here and we're going to analyze what's going on. To get better. What we're working with are the neighbors that live in the communities. And so what we do is rally them around a very simple idea of caring for other people. So what I just did there was pulled down some of this muddiness, added a little bit of air on the high end, and then did a roll-off low-cut filter to just take care of it. We're going to do a little before and after here. Or a gated community, we all have relational situations that we need to improve if we want our lives and ultimately if we want the world to get better. What we're working with are the neighbors that live in the... So then from there, for this quick tutorial, after you have two compressors and a parametric equalizer on there... All we're going to do now is limit. So we're going to head in, find our hard limiter here. Communities. And so what we do is rally them around a very simple idea of caring. For so we're peaking around negative three decibels below full scale. So what I'm going to do is do about a three decibel input boost, and we'll just type it in to be simple. And I want my maximum amplitude to be negative 0.6. That's where I like everything to go. Keep it at peak. Leave look ahead and release time as is and listen to that. For other people. People that join the We Care team wear shirts that say We Care, period. We put signs in our yards that say We Care, period. And then we also have block leaders that volunteer on each block to help rally people in that neighborhood to simply care for each other. So with that, we've done a real simple mastering process that will make a huge difference when people are listening to your video. The mixing is critically important, but the mastering process is important too. So with nothing on it, we'll listen to it. The other thing we do is what we call our friendship house, and that's where we move a trained staff member into a neighborhood. And with everything back engaged. We build a home called the friendship house where the family lives, but it also has a community space where we have after-school programs, job trainings, GED classes, or whatever services the neighborhood needs. Now, we're done with our master. We like it. So we're going to come up to File, Export, Multi-Track Mixdown, Entire Session. And once we do that, we choose where we want to put it. I always like to title things by their version. Save. Then choose the Wave option. Make sure it's Wave. Sample type, sample rate, same as source, same as source, come down to OK. So that's done. Now you have a new stereo track that you can go back into Premiere, and this is what I like to do when I master something. I'll take the timeline, 
I'll duplicate it. I'll name it something intuitive like V4. Open up that new timeline, full screen it using the tilde key, select all the audio, all the audio, and remove it. Come down here, we have no audio. Make sure our track mixer is free from any effects that were left over from the last sequence. All clear, everything's all clear. Everything seems neutral. We can rename things later, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate over to our project window and pull in that track we just mixed down, import. Now here's our final stereo mix for this project. This is a great way to deliver audio to a client and it's a real nice way to clean things up. Sometimes I'll do this before color grading because that way I know that I'm not gonna mess with any of my audio edits. Plus Premiere tends to be a little clunky if you're doing a lot of aggressive mixing. So just drop it in there and it'll fit perfectly in sync. Let's go ahead and just confirm that. All of us are at least relationally impoverished. And so all of us have need for the message of community renewal. And that is that we must learn to love our neighbor as ourself. And it doesn't matter if you live in a struggling neighborhood or a gated community, we all have relational situations that we need to improve if we want our lives and ultimately if we want the world to get better. What we're working with are the neighbors. That's all, tutorial, very simple. Um, it is a complicated idea, but a very simple in practice. So just try mastering to take your audio productions to the next level when in the context of video. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought about this. If you learned something or if you didn't, I'd love to interact with you that way. I love talking to each and every one of you. I do respond to every single comment as best as I can. So please leave a comment. Let's interact. Let's get to know each other that way. Follow me over on Twitter. That's where I post about all things related to YouTube when I'm not posting on YouTube at Oliver J. Hughes. Go ahead and like the video and share with your friends. We're growing a lot in 2018. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate you coming and joining the family because I do appreciate each and every one of you who have made it on board this far. And with nothing else, I will see you next week.